England was once described as a green and pleasant land, where the trains ran on time and people left their doors unlocked. A land of communities where neighbours respected one another. It seems those days are gone, long gone. Today, in towns up and down the land, it's do as you please and dump as you please. The rubbish dumping around this area has got completely out of control. People just don't just seem to bother. If there's an area they can throw it in, they'll throw it in. When we were young, we were never brought up in an environment like this, with rubbish laying about the place. It's not the same now. No, so they were the good old days, they were good old days. But all hope may not be lost. There are still some people willing to dedicate their lives to turning back the flow of filth. In Preston, two council enforcement officers, Gary and Paul, are setting out to change hearts and minds and win this city back, alley by filthy alley. We're, we're trying to go back to what it used to be in the, I don't know, the 50s and the 60s. And what I, used to, what I mean by that, people used to hang their washing up here. People used to, this is where people used to come out and have a chat. Uh, the kids used to play here, and it was great. It's, it's, it could be a fabulous, fabulous asset for these people to use. But they can't use it as a tip. It's just a bloody tip. Oh, lovely. The smell of dog s is lovely. What is this? Eh? This is the other thing we end up with. Yeah, we pick up the remnants because he moves. You know what I mean? He's been off like a rocket. <laughs> Possibly owing a few bob, I would suggest. The strangest aspect of all this is that it always seems to be the residents who are dumping on their own doorstep. I don't get this at all. I really can't for the life of me get this. It's stupid. It's just stupid. It's enough to try anyone's patience, even an old pro like Gary. The thing that weighs me up the most is if, if you look at all the rubbish that's dumped here, it's just treating the council with total contempt, isn't it? They haven't even the courtesy to even put it in a bag, tie up the bag and pile it up. It's just a chuck it. And then they start whinging and moaning about the council. It's a two-way street. You do your bit, we'll do your bit. Once again, Gary and Paul swing into filth-fighting action. The keeping is in a job. You could be sat at home watching Nature may run free around Pilbrook to the southwest of London, but sometimes the water doesn't. These screens are designed to catch floating or dumped debris, and that's just what they do. Oh, crikey. Well, it's not too bad, but this is a bit unusual. Trevor and Terry are waterways experts from the Environment Agency, and they're here to do important work. Worst thing is what happened in 2007. These people that live in the, the houses on site get flooded. Uh, and the whole field and the people in the street beyond, it all flooded. And rubbish on the screen doesn't help because it keeps the level of water high. Until you clear it and the water level drops, the water in the streets can't get down the drains to get into the river anyway. People always blame the river, but it's not, not usually the case. So what's the plan of action? OK, what do you reckon? Really rubbish first, try to get think, the fridge yeah, out? Yeah, get the rubbish out first, then um, and we can get to the And if needs be, we can get in the river yep. then and, and manhandle yep. it up. Lower the water, yep. yeah. OK, then. Okay, then. Let's do that. First, they tackle the easy stuff, including some festive leftovers. Happy Christmas. Yep. <laughs> Don't normally get them till about June. <laughs> it seems one man's cuttings are a filth fighter's foe. Looks like general garden rubbish, cuttings and things, leaf, branches. It, it doesn't take an awful lot to block the screen, so anything like this is too much. Where people prune, and they throw them in, and they get caught up and everything all the small debris gets caught up on it, and this is the result. It may look a little to them at the time, and it may well be a little at the time, but it's, it's when it's all accumulated in one spot like this, it becomes a big blockage over for quite a quick time, really. And these two know what they're talking about. They've been at it for over three decades, and in all that time, it seems things have only got worse. Some people just don't think. They, they think it's... Um, they need educating about it. That's, that's, that's what they need. They just think it's easy to put it on the bank and it just disappears. More often than not, filth fighting is about dealing with the consequences of social decline. 
It's a similar story in Preston, where Gary and Paul want to get to the heart of the problem. It's in their DNA. Before they were street enforcers, these two were law enforcers. Years of training in the police. Yeah. Investigating crime, looking up criminals, and I've reduced the shoveling sh in the back alley. A heavyweight mattress. Yes. I think somebody's got a bad back. It'll be me, but then does. They can try to track down the culprits, but it's not always that easy. This is one of the usual problems that we get round this area. We've obviously had some builder at work. One of the things that uh, challenge anybody to find evidence out of a piece of building waste like that. It's just sand, cement, plaster dust. There's nothing in there of any evidential value. They follow leads, which sometimes lead nowhere. One or two of the residents told us that the guy that lives at this house is one of the chief um, culprits for putting loose waste out. So what I intend to do is just see if anybody in at the house, give them a quick knock, ask them to come out, and we'll see if we can get some form of explanation why they're putting loose waste out in the alley. Well, nobody in at the moment. They do like to uh, ignore us for a while when they see us with the yellow jackets. The more forceful, the better. It seems you can't take the cop out of the ex-cop. Uh, I used to come and knock a couple of times and the next thing we put a sledgehammer through the door. It's far good fun, that. Unfortunately, we don't have that power now, so we're a bit uh, thwarted, but one day we may get the power to uh, use our friendly sledgehammers as the uh, skeleton key. It's great fun, you know. If they're going to win this war, they'll need the residents on their side. It's not collection day today, love. Do you want to take it back in? One resident seems to think it's dustbin day. That was almost a resident come out there and went, Oh, thanks. thanks William. No, no. No, 30 years in job, I didn't get many praise from uh, people I locked up, saying, so, no, thank you very you got, much uh, for locking me back, up. And... We're going back to the old police days here. Let's, let's lean against the wall and talk about the days in the police. The good old days, the yeah. good old days. But it's going to take more than wishful thinking and old-fashioned policing skills to win over hearts and minds in the alleyways of Preston. It's evening in Ipswich. There's a man here who last year collected 60 tonnes of dog mess and threw it away. Not content with that, he often goes to work in the public toilets. When it comes to filth fighting, John Sutton is a specialist. I uh, just got to turn the lights on because some idiot broke the lights out the other week and they come and fix them and they put the timer out. I don't seem to be a lot of mess in here, but I will have to wash the pans down tonight and mop the floors. Just have a quick old dust round here. But it's often much worse than this. But all the old, old oldies are going to the park tonight. That's why we have to keep them locked. A lot of my youngsters and all drinking and that, yeah. They sit over on the old play area, freezing bloody cold drinking. <laughs> There's nothing worse, is there? I'll just clean around the bottoms here now. A bit new tidy. Yeah, just give it a good old clean up. Put your old grime off it. What a life, eh? Cleaning toilets. Clean up mess all day and they come in here at night and do it. He started with the easy bit. These are the ladies' loos. Next one. Do the same in there. John's job cleaning the public conveniences may be inconvenient, but he still spares a thought for the customers. It must be a hell of a for a woman to sit in here with that box out. So she's a big old lady. Public lavatories have become an endangered species. It seems years of abuse have made councils weary of maintaining them. Right, I'll do the floors now. The deodorising disinfectant sweetens the air until John catches a whiff of something else. Smells something dodgy around right here. It seems the rank smell is coming from the gentleman's facility next door. Cool, I don't smell very fresh in here. No, it's always been smelling wacky back in here. John identifies the unmistakable smell of illegal substances. We often find needles in here where someone's been in here and injected themselves, and uh, old beer cans. 
They even eat the food in here. Quite disgusting, isn't they? But John's not about to let an exotic odour come between him and his filth. Well, you can smell it all wacky, baggy. Sometimes John likes to get away from his work. That's gone back a few years now. I used to do martial arts and um, I really used to enjoy it. At the moment, I do uh, more fishing than anything else. Yeah, it's just, it's just no sitting up by having a fish, you know, even if you don't catch anything. But first, there's some fishing to be done here. Old dog ends get caught in here. Some dog ends out, look. Big glass, chewing gum. No ten pound notes out. They never leave any money in here, that's the only trouble. With no tips involved in this job, it's a wonder John likes it. So it doesn't matter what you do in these toilets, you know, you can scrub them from top to bottom in the mornings. You come back in the afternoon or in the evening, and they're filthy dirty again. It may not stay like this for long, but right now, John's created a sparkling masterpiece. And now he can turn his mind to more important matters. Oh, well, that's me, Dan. I'm all from now. Put my feet up and have a nice scotch. Good night. Back at the West London water grills, it's an unchained melody. Terry and Trevor are fishing out yet more Christmas trees. That's the fox, Yep. Yeah. They're a well-drilled team. 31 years we've been together. Well, hello, married couple. <laughs> and yes, I'm the male. For Trevor and Terry, it's a marriage of convenience that has stood the test of time. I don't know, I originally came here with a view to stay in a couple of months. I, 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 I've always enjoyed the work up to a point. I used to love the job when I was younger because I was fitter. But uh, it, it's a good enough job. And it seems this husband and wife team are in perfect harmony. Come on, then, Joe. You go and try the rope round the, round the, okay. the bit of the bottom. You push, I'll pull. Right. There we go. A fridge may not be an everyday catch, but then again, Trevor's used to that. Well, in the mill, really, cars, sofas, chairs, um, <laughs> trees, you name know it. Pretty, pretty much anything that you find in the house, we found in the river. And sometimes even the contents of the paddock. Go with a dead horse in the river. That was quite fun, digging a hole to bury that. All right, one, two, three. They may like the job, but sometimes they can't help wondering why they have to do it. The thing is, where this river runs up through there, you're never more than about anything from, from 400 yards to, to a quarter of a mile from the local tip. How difficult can it be to put this in the back of your car? You know, it's, it's seeping, really. People just got no regard for the environment. Got it? Two, three. One. Yep. In this job, it seems, you've always got to expect the unexpected. You know, today a fridge, tomorrow a sofa, who knows? Could, could well be. Lovely. Okay. That's what's done, then. Right. What? Job done, the location is gated and the fridge freighted. Another collection of rubbish in Ipswich is drawing a crowd. We're here to clear out a load of flight of Nobody knows whose it is. <laughs> a lot of people think modern art is a load of rubbish, but can rubbish be art? We've got loads of extra black bags here, with shoe racks, mattresses. The abandoned artefacts make a statement about modern society. We've got a spin dryer here, we've got bags and bags of rubbish. Burnt out rubbish here, right outside somebody's gate. Which, uh, which was a wheelie bin. We've got lots of glass here that can be recycled. Um, tellies, uh, tables, a mattress. It's wet and soggy, it's split open. This mattress is going to be twice as heavy as it would have been otherwise. It all depends on how you look at things. VW camper van there, if you want it. It's all a matter of interpretation. Perhaps it's all worth a fortune. What if that's Tracy Emin's bed? Or this, an early Damien Hurst. I think we could do a go the whole hog, really, on this job. It's not as if Sam is trained in the study of modern art. I went to university in Plymouth, uh, completed that, and ended up not quite knowing what to do. Worked for a council in Devon, came up here and got the job on Ipswich Council. And uh, I've been lucky, really, with things as the way they are. I'm, I'm very grateful for the job and get on well with all the people, get on well with the supervisors. It's good. I enjoy it. But Sam's not impressed 
by the not-so-carefully assembled collection. People think it's all right to dump it in the back alleyway here and, and everyone else has to suffer. Someone's dumped some raw chicken down here. That's just asking for vermin. You've also got dog fowl in here and stuff. The deeper they dig, it seems, the dirtier it gets. So how does this compare to other jobs the lads have done? Some of the worst jobs are when you get a call to a fridge freezer that's been dumped and been left for a couple of months. And we had one <laughs> a couple of weeks ago from a, an exotic pet shop that had shut down full of mice and chicks and um, things all, all thawed out and lovely. But Sam has become a hardened filth fighter. It's a sort of zen thing. If something's been there so long, it kind of goes through the smell barrier and it's all right after that. It's stuff that's been there a little while that's just fresh. That's what you don't want. A last stinky scrape and it's game over. It's about mission accomplished for today, really. It's nice and clear, there's access for the residents and uh, hopefully they can all make a fresh start. And talking of fresh starts, in the other alley in Preston, the campaign to win hearts and minds is in full swing. Gary and Paul have pulled out all the stops. Well, what we're trying to do is show people what you can do with your alleyways, if you can keep it clean. These alleyways, as I said to you earlier, are kind of extensions of people's houses, and they can be used as extensions of people's houses. But if you chuck rubbish all over the place, who wants to use that bit of your house? But, so all we're trying to show people is, look after it, and this is what you can do with it. And as you see, I think this is fabulous, and this is what we want the bikes to look like. Are we uh, going to start getting people into the alleyway, then we can start talking? I think we've actually got the Deputy Mayor here today to just to introduce the proceedings yes. to the uh, local public. OK, um, just like to welcome everybody and thank you all for coming. Um, uh, especially uh, our Deputy Mayor, Councillor John Swindles, who's going to cut the tape and officially open the alley for us. Yeah, just cut it when you're ready. Right. Okay, thank you. The symbolic reopening of the new look alley is carried out in style. Now it's time to spread the word. There's a lot of people in this area that needs re-educating, and that's what we're starting doing as from today. All right. Well, we'll wait and see. Can a gazebo, some temporary dressing, and a visiting dignitary change some ingrained and very dirty habits? The fact of the matter there's people here, these people will go away and they might speak to somebody else and they might speak to an after and they might speak to an and slowly but surely the message gets out. All we can do is keep harming the message, and eventually the public will get it. Well, you want to come to the uh, back between Dolphin Street and Clover Street. Well, They're a disgrace. They have been for the last two years. And that's what we're trying to put an end to. We're yeah, yeah. doing nothing. We're doing our level best to sort it out for you, yeah. and that's why we started this campaign, I... to turn it round. <laughs> well, I'd love to be able to just walk down an alleyway every day of the week and there's not a bag anywhere and people are taking responsibility for what they're doing and it'd be absolutely fantastic. Now, whether we'll ever get to that, I don't know. I would hope we will sooner or later, but whether, whether it'll be in my lifetime, I'm not so sure. We're trying and that's amazing. Yeah. But I think it does give people ideas. You look and you think, yes, I'm really good. And I think it's good. I like it. it changes, it's, yeah. It's nice, huh? Yeah. <laughs> At least for some locals, it's a pleasing sign of better times ahead. For Ipswich dog poo picker John Sutton, it's a day off from filth fighting. At work, he's out alone in all weathers, and today is no exception. Go and fish in. <laughs> John's heading to a favourite haunt. Morning, Jerry. These are my new thermals. Camouflage, what my daughter bought me for Christmas. John used to be into harder sports. At one time, I used to do karate, show the can. And uh, getting a bit too old for it now, because I haven't done it for quite a while, but... That's a good way of warming up before we catch any fish. <laughs> I'm loving it warm now. <laughs> All we've got to do now is put 
put a hook on, test the depth, put some bait on and hopefully catch some fish. This is an old rod. They're still good old rods, you know, a lot of people still use them. It's a welcome chance to reflect. I'm just waiting, see if there's anything about. Just relax, chill out. Nothing's happened yet. I'll give her about an hour or so, if there's nothing, nothing about, I'll pack up and go back home. An old woman. <laughs> Like I say, I'm not a great angler, I just enjoy it. That's what it's all about. Lovely, isn't it? Sitting up here. That's better than being at work anyway. Cleaning neat dog bins. And toilets, cleaning toilets. <laughs> I think the only thing you're going to catch here today is a bean cold. No fish today, but John Sutton is one contented filth fighter.